Um, hello and welcome everybody. So glad you're here and joining us this afternoon. Really great to have um, so many uh, folks uh, joining us for the um, webinar this afternoon. And there is my picture. Uh, so we don't have cameras on today, which I miss seeing your um, smiling faces, but uh, yes, nonetheless, a picture of me. So let's move on to the next slide. Um, and thinking about the uh, Division of Library Information Services. For those of you who are not aware, um, I do this update um, once a quarter. Um, just to give an opportunity to talk about uh, things that are going on here in the division, things that are upcoming, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so just uh, opportunity to get together and to share information. Um, one of the things that we uh, do uh, as we are taking registrations is that we do ask um, participants if they would um, have any, any questions that they would like to ask. And one of the questions that came in um, during the sort of the registration process was the following. And so here's what I was thinking. Um, if you would uh, like to type into the chat your response from your library system related to this question, I think that would be really great. All right, so this particular question is for everybody. And the question is, was where are libraries as far as service around the state? And I'm sure that means as it relates to the pandemic and reopening and hours and programming. So any information that you would like to share with the rest of the group, if you would please uh, put that in chat, that would be really, really wonderful. And again, we will probably have some time at the end of the hour and we could um, open up the mic and, and also talk about some of these things as, as well. So um, anyway, that's the one of the questions that came in today. Where are libraries as far as service around the state? So if if you're um, willing to put that in the chat, that would be really wonderful. So we'll we'll get started here thinking about the uh, slides I've uh, prepared, and then we can um, entertain other questions as well. So as we think about the division and moving through the current time in our staffing situation, I always want to give you a, um, a snapshot of what's currently going on uh, in the division as it relates to staffing. We do have 70 full-time positions. There are currently four vacancies in those positions. Um, we are currently advertising, if you know anybody that's interested, um, for a continuing education supervisor, as well as a leadership consultant in our Bureau of Library Development. Um, so those are two that are actively being advertised right now. We do have some um, part-time vacancies, uh, as you can note there on the screen as well. We do have 20 positions that are hourly positions um, at, with three vacancies in, in, that, in, that, um, in that sort of subset of, of employees. So, uh, Staffing is healthy. We're very fortunate to be able to fill positions at this point and, and are doing so. And as a matter of fact, I want to say welcome to new staff since our last um, division update together. Here are uh, the names of the folks who have um, started with us since the last update that we ha had in December. Um, and as you saw from the previous screen, we're going to have more new folks to welcome in the next couple of months. So I know that you uh, join me uh, in welcoming new division staff, and I know you'll look forward to, to getting to interact with these staff at, um, at the appropriate time. So welcome to new division staff, and, and, and of course, welcome to everyone who is attending today. So one of the biggest things going on in Tallahassee right now today, and just in case you're not aware, is our um, is legislative session. And while this does say upcoming legislative sessions, of course, we are currently in the middle of the 2020 one legislative session actually um, in the uh, week three of uh, the 2021 legislative sessions as, uh, slated to end on uh, April 30th. So I did give you there the dates, uh, or no, no, I'm sorry, the time frame, the broad time frame for 2022 and 2023. One of the things to remember about our state's legislative session is that um, we do have committee weeks that are the basically five weeks of committee weeks that are happen prior to the start of session. So what I've um, labeled here is this sort of the official 60 day time frame, but always know that committee weeks fall prior to the start of legislative session proper. So 
Um, we are scheduled to be finished on April 30th, um, and then we will have committee week starting uh, sometime in uh, November, uh, you know, sort of fitting those five weeks in around holidays would be my guess uh, with starting in November. So uh, we will not have a very long break, uh, as you can tell, uh, between the 2021 session and the start of the 2022 session. But Anyway, those are things that uh, you may find interesting to know and be aware of. We are on a, um, a current cycle where odd years, uh, or let me say uh, years that are odd numbers. Um, we have legislative session March through May, and then um, this, the years that are even numbers session is earlier uh, January through March. So um, anyway, just a little bit of interest and intrigue for legislative sessions. So um, also thinking in general about the division um, and our councils and boards, just wanna, um, I always wanna share with you a little bit about what is going on with our councils and boards. Uh, the division's a citizen support organization, which is the Friends of the State Library and of uh, let me slow down a little bit. The Friends of the State Library and Archives of Florida, Inc. Um, is the division's citizen support organization, and it provides support for division activities and facilitates awareness of the division. We do have several board members with us here today, and, and welcome. We thank you for your service. So glad you're here. We also have a State Library Council, um, and we have several State Library Council members uh, with us today as well. Uh, this particular group provides advice and assistance related to federal funding for projects. And so thank you again for your service. Both of these um, uh, councils and boards are made up of nine individuals from across the state representing um, geography, libraries of different types. Um, as far as the um, citizen support organization also represents the um, archives and records management fields as well. So lots of broad representation and wonderful um, opportunities for service. So if you ever are interested in serving on one of our councils or boards, please let me know. Always looking for um, folks who might be interested in serving in the future. So as we sort of get started, as I usually do, for those of you all who have been um, coming to Division Updates for a while, going to always sort of take a look at budget as we sort of um, get started here um, in our time together. Um, if, if you were looking at the uh, Florida's yearly budget cycle there, our cycle of life, we're sort of at the eight o'clock uh, position um, and, and um, during the legislative session. Um, and as the slide there says the House and Senate will um, begin to develop and will pass um, separate budgets uh, during the session. And so that will um, happen. Has, they've started some of the very preliminary work, but obviously the budget gets a much more uh, fine, uh, finely focused uh, as we move uh, into April and to the middle of April, as well as into late April, as you see there, as you kind of move around that circle. Um, Cheryl, I'm sorry, I'm uh, having a little voice problems for on me. I will try to be very still. Uh, you happen to know me very well and you know that I don't sit still very well, so, but I'll try, maybe maybe my fidgeting is, is part of the problem. So I will do my best to, to sit more still. Um, but anyway, so I always wanted to think about the budget cycle and where we are in the budget. Um, and so you can uh, see that um, in the on the slide deck here and sort of where we are. Um, we do have uh, the governor's budget has been already submitted um, and we're now in the at the time where House and Senate will start getting really serious about putting together their budgets. So. Um, that's where we are in the budget cycle. So let's look with a little bit more um, specificity at uh, the budget comparison by grant program. What I've given here on the slide is um, the 2021, which is the current year, um, where with our current projections for the current year, as well as the current governor's budget numbers. Um, so just uh, thinking back to the last slide for just a second, um, we started out um, a couple months ago with the Department of State's budget being published. That was in the fall and October timeframe. Um, then the governor has to release the budget 30 days before session. So that's the budget that is um, 
our, our um, the currently the budget that sort of we're focusing on as it relates to for next year. So these are the, where uh, the amounts are projected, maybe best words, uh, for within the governor's budget for next year. Now, the thing to know is that as far as 2021, 2022, um, we still have quite a bit of time left in this legislative session. Um, so the House and Senate need to develop their budget. There will be budget conference um, as, as always to be able to finalize a budget that will be passed by the legislature as one of their, generally speaking, one of their final um, acts that they uh, have or do together uh, here for legislative session. And that would be uh, round about the April 30th deadline. So um, wanted to present to you what's in the governor's budget right now, but know that your phone calls, your activities, um, the things that you uh, have been working on with, um, with the Florida Library Association, as well as in support of the library cooperatives, um, all of those things are incredibly important and incredibly um, needed at the present time uh, to be able to make sure that the um, that the House and Senate budgets are um, are different, perhaps, than the governor's current uh, budget recommendations. So, I'm still thinking about the other things on uh, the slide here. Um, just wanted to make a couple of other notes in case you're not aware. The amount under the state aid to libraries. Um, that $17.3 million, that is the recurring amount of dollars in the state aid to libraries grant program. So that's the recurring amount. So the House and Senate could certainly uh, decide to fund that at a higher level, just as they could um, and hopefully will in all these cases, uh, uh, put the additional dollars that would increase the amount in the governor's budget um, also in the library cooperative grant line as well, of course. Um, another and Amy, we, sorry, we do have a hand up from Judy. Um, okay. If you're up for taking a question right sure. now. Sure, sure. Judy, I have unmuted you and you are currently self-muted. So if you have a question, you can unmute yourself. Okay, maybe that was from earlier. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, I'll no put it problems. down for you. No problems. Um, the, um, so also looking at this slide on the public library construction, I did wanna put that, um, make a note there. Um, the, the public library construction, there are a number of grant uh, 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 projects being considered by uh, the, um, 2021 legislative um, body and during legislative session, um, those are not ever represented in the Department of State's budget or in the governor's budget. So that's why you see there that I noted that is not applicable. It's not that the projects are not applicable, it's that a, a having a, a, a dollar figure in the governor's budget is not applicable. So just wanted to make sure to, to, to um, explain that and point that out. Um, if you happen to have um, uh, public library construction grant applications submitted um, for review during the 2021 legislative session, it is imperative that you let your state elected officials know uh, that they, uh, or respectfully request that they support uh, your their, your grant applications uh, um, as it relates to that particular program. A couple of other things to note here: um, uh, I, there that has been introduced um, into the budget process and consideration before the 2021 uh, legislature. Um, some dollars for career online high school that's been introduced on the house and the senate side um, you don't see that represented in my chart on the screen because that's not 
uh, currently part of the division's budget. Um, and also I thought, let's just take an opportunity right now while we're here on this slide, because I imagine many of you um, have uh, questions about uh, the ARPA funds or the American Rescue Plan Act, the ARPA funds. We did learn earlier this week that the division um, is eligible and will receive $6.7 million dollars from the Institute of Museum and Library Services as part of the American Rescue Plan Act. At this time, I don't have any details about what the time frame is for this money, when reports would be due, um, what the specific criteria are um, related to this grant program. So stay tuned because there's clearly going to be more information that will be distributed at some point in the future. Um, we anticipate in getting some additional information from the Institute of Museum and Library Services, or IMLS, um, sometime in April. So stay tuned with us on that. And as always, I'll say now, you'll hear me say it later, welcome your um, phone calls, emails, uh, you know, any kind of contacts um, on anything at any point. You always can reach out and, and ask questions. But at this point, I don't have any more information about those ARPA funds, um, except for the amount that um, has been designated for Florida through IMLS. So uh, more to come on that. So looking at the budget, um, uh, a division budget by category and again sort of thinking about the current year reflecting a little bit on 1920 just having it there for comparison as well as what's currently in the governor's budget um, in the 2021 year um, as represented there with the asterisks um, that those dollars in those two categories our general revenue category as well as our records management trust fund category are still subject to a six percent holdback and so at this point, those amounts that you see there with an asterisk are the current estimate of the amount of funds that will be received in those categories in the current year. Um, again, just looking at the, um, the governor's budget and what is currently um, in that budget, uh, which we know will change once we get a budget uh, passed by the House and Senate and as they go to conference and, and moving forward in that process. Um, but just wanted to give you a, a, a comparison by budget category and of course across years. And looking at um, a five-year overall funding history for the division, um, just a couple of other um, things to note, at, as we've sort of seen on other screens, I've got an asterisk there because in the 2021 year, still aren't not totally sure what the uh, budget will be. Uh, the 6% holdbacks have been um, required by the governor, but will take legislative action in order to um, uh, finalize uh, those amounts. Um, and uh, indeed, as I have said in the past, uh, but haven't said during this webinar, um, that 6% holdback is in those two funds as we saw, the two categories as we saw in the last slide, the, the amount, the reduction to state aid is actually deeper than a 6% cut as currently projected. So um, still a little bit of information yet to come on the division's current year budget and what it will be um, as we get to the end of the year. And, and just as a reminder, in case uh, you don't have it sort of at the tip of your tongue, that the state's year does end on June 30th. Um, so we're, we're getting sort of close to the fourth quarter here. Um, so I know some decisions will be made um, at some point in the very near future about the current year budget. Another way to look at our budget is just sort of looking at a pie chart and thinking about uh, how things, these three uh, budget categories make up the entirety of the division's budget. So just a visual image here. Um, so you can see sort of the difference between uh, last year and the current year, of course, with the note that we're still waiting to know um, exactly how much is in the current year budget based on those holdbacks and the other cuts. So. Um, Happy to answer any questions if there are any about the uh, the division's budget. And I know Casey, you've been keeping an eye on that. Have you seen any uh, particular questions? Nope, none so far. Checking for any hand raises, but I don't see any. Okay, 
perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Let me take a, a quick minute to say thank you, everyone, for putting your uh, notes in about what you know, sort of currently going on um, related to your service provision at your libraries. I appreciated seeing that. I look forward to going back and reading it. I haven't been reading it and talking at the same time. So uh, thank you for, put, for putting those notes in the chat so that other people will know sort of how things are going um, across the state uh, and libraries. So great. So still we're going to stay in the budget category and, and think a little bit about some specific programs um, just to be able to sort of call this out with a little bit more clarity. State aid to libraries looking here at a five-year funding history. Um, and again, with that asterisk, meaning it's not yet fully um, known. Uh, this is the uh, lowest amount that um, is projected in the current year, that $15.7 million you see represented on your screen, uh, that for, for the current year state aid to libraries, and that is indeed what the current grant awards are, um, are how they're calculated off of that appropriation, the $15.7 million. If we look at the library cooperative grant program, um, and we've so seen this on a couple of other slides, and again, uh, both on that state aid as well as here on the library cooperative grant uh, slide, your voice um, and your county or your city's voice through your legislative delegation is so important um, to make sure that our state elected officials understand uh, the importance of state aid to libraries as well as the library cooperative grant funding. Um, so please make sure to continue your advocacy efforts as coordinated by the Florida Library Association. Uh, thank you for all the work you've already done and thank you for the work that is uh, yet upcoming, I know yet to be done. But anyway, still continuing to look at our uh, sort of a couple of the grant programs and thinking about construction construction. We've got uh, loads of projects on the list but have not uh, had uh, a lot of funding uh, lately. Um, for those of you who are keeping an eye to the uh, at the national level, um, uh, and I'm hearing through the American Library Association as well as some other national channels, which you may also be uh, hearing, uh, that there is an infrastructure uh, bill uh, that will be, uh, that is going to be considered by Congress and uh, they're extremely hopeful that uh, library building infrastructure will be part of that federal bill. So we'll see. Stay tuned on that. Uh, certainly Florida um, has lots of need uh, in the uh, support for library construction, public library construction, and it would be a, a wonderful opportunity if that federal funding comes to fruition. Stay tuned. Um, more of, uh, about that will be coming uh, at some point in the, in the near future. Uh, so LSTA, looking here a little bit about um, uh, the five-year funding history there, and of course in our current year we do have um, the $1.9 million in CARES Act funding that um, has already come to the division and has already been awarded in grants, current uh, projects out there. Uh, so just thinking about those federal dollars as they come into the state of Florida. Um, and, and then, uh, so there's the federal allotment there, that's the amount that actually comes into the division, and then the amount that we uh, um, award in external awards. So just sort of looking at that and that five-year history as well. So now I'm gonna kind of really change gears, sort of leaving budget behind, but obviously if you've got questions, can always talk about budget, but sort of let's, let's talk about some other things too. Uh, the budget's important, but let's talk about some other, uh, some other great things. I hope that you're all aware of the Flynn Share It program, our resource sharing platform that we unveiled back in August of 2020. Um, it's going um, with great support from, from libraries of all types all across the state. So we hope that you um, know about Flynn Share It. If you don't, uh, this is not, uh, I, I mean, I can give you some information, but I can, more importantly, I can connect you with folks who know a lot about Flynn Share It, who um, can give you all kinds of information and answer all your questions. Just to, set, uh, to give you a few, like, teasers about Flynn Shared, if you're not already aware. Uh, one thing that seems to be highly um, sought after and, and uh, desired and used is the ability to download MARC records for copy cataloging. So that's one of those um, uh, wonderful um, 
pluses or perks uh, of the Flynn Share It. Uh, you can, obviously it is a resource sharing platform, so it's designed uh, to help in your um, interlibrary loan efforts, um, sharing here across the, uh, the, the state. And thank you there, um, uh, Josie, for sending out that link. I do appreciate you uh, doing that for me. Uh, that's awesome. So folks can use that, um, the, um, the, link to find out more and thank you Sarah for being willing to answer questions if there are any in the in the chat thank you Sarah that's great got a lot of experts on I know a little bit about a lot of things but the, um, lots of experts on who can really answer questions at now or or after the webinar also that for sure um, so just want to talk about some upcoming grant deadlines. Um, we do have our LSTA, um, our Library Services and Technology Act, our, our uh, federal program, that $2.15 million. Um, that's, the, that's the grand total award, about a million dollars for competitive grants that will be available. Um, that's due in early April, April um, 2021. Oh, great, Sheila. Great. Mary Esther loves Flynn Sherritt. That is awesome. Well, I, should, I should say thrilled with Flynn Sherritt. That's great. Thank you, Sheila, for that. Um, and uh, uh, I, I didn't uh, I appreciate that uh, that comment, but um, uh, it is unsolicited and un, un, unprompted, maybe I should say, but thank you for sharing that. That's great. Yep. So the LSTA deadline is April the 5th and all that information is available on our webpage, which is great. And thank you to Marion and David for being on today. You can, they can certainly answer questions that you might have about that. And Jennifer Nicholson, that's great to have, again, a lot of experts online with me right now. So if you've got questions in the chat, I know that we're going to be able to, uh, to answer those questions. Thank you, Vicki, for the shout out on the uh, support for the courier service as part of Flynn Share It. We're happy to do it. Very happy to support uh, libraries in general in Florida, but certainly as this specifically in talking about Flynn Share It and the resource sharing. So I wanted to make sure that you're aware of another um, uh, grant program that is available and I did talk about this at our last division update the Division of Cultural Affairs does have a specific cultural projects grant program this um, funds cultural pro projects programs exhibitions or series um, the applications are due June 1st and they would be for funding for the 2022-2023 state fiscal year so they uh, this particular grant program you do have to sort of think a little bit further uh, down the road maybe than I do, um, but I'm sure you all are planning way further in advance than, than I am. But want to make sure, always want to make sure that you're aware of that there are other grant programs out there that libraries certainly are welcome to uh, participate in. And this just happens to be one of those uh, programs. When we're together, I always want to remind you that we're in a constant state of rule revisions here in uh, the Division of Library Information Services. Um, we Rule revision is how we carry out uh, law um, by um, taking law and then writing uh, a rule uh, to, to carry that out. The, the big one that we do every year is our grant programs, rule revision, and we're getting ready to uh, uh, publish that information, which would be the changes to the grant program. So stay tuned on that. Um, and we also have some upcoming um, rulemaking as it relates to our records retention schedules. Um, so we have lots going on in the rulemaking always in the Division of Library and Information Services. We're always in some state of rulemaking. Um, if you are didn't know this already, you can go to flrules.org and you can tell that system what rules you are interested in uh, following, if you will, and, and, and when a rule revision is made in that particular rule, like you see uh, an example up there of two different rules that we um, are working on. If you put those rules into your, um, what is the word for that, login information, your, your profile, that's the word I wanted, your profile, uh, it would send you an email every time we're doing a rule, uh, any kind of work related to those rules. So it just gives you another place to find out about, um, about the, uh, what's going on in rule revisions. 
So great. Always roll revisions here in the division. So we're going to talk about some other great things going on in the, the division. Want to make sure that you all know that our guide to military records and the wartime experience is available uh, through the Florida Memory uh, webpage there as shown on your screen. This is a guide to Florida's military history, including back to the Seminole Wars, the Spanish-American War, the World Wars, and much more. So I hope you'll take take a look at this updated uh, resource that is provided to you through the State Archives from the, on the Florida Memory webpage. In addition, another really exciting um, set of documents that we've just made available for the first time is a set of letter books from our very earliest governors. Um, these are These letter books are actually exactly that. They are outgoing correspondence and select incoming correspondence that has been bound together. And these, we have four letter books from the four territorial governors starting in um, 1836 to 1845. That's the span of the four governors, of the four territorial governors. And then we have uh, letter books from five of the early state governors uh, from 1845 to 1865, roughly. Um, each letter book has a table of contents that can be searched so that you can locate a specific sender or recipient or correspondence from a particular point in time. Um, so it's, this is a really exciting collection that we just made available, and we do intend to continue to digitize these records. Uh, the, the interesting um, thing is that we have, uh, archive staff has in, indexed more than 3,300 pages from nine volumes, and we do have 39 volumes. So there's there's more to come in the Florida Governor's records. We started with the oldest, really a fascinating collection. I hope you'll go out and take a look at it, um, and it will be growing. So I hope you'll I hope you'll find it interesting, and that you'll come back to the Florida Governor's records and 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 check in and see what the you know, what's happening and the the changes that are happening as we continue to update this collection. Some more exciting things going on uh, at the division. Well, for, uh, for me anyway, I love the uh, public library data tables. We did just release the 2018, 2019 public library data tables. We wanna make sure that everybody is aware uh, that those data tables are out there and exist. They are up on our webpage in um, a PDF version. Uh, just know that if you have a need for that data in a different format, uh, we can certainly provide that uh, to you. Uh, Nancy Gidry Hall is our a new state data coordinator, and she is, would be more than happy to get you the data in an Excel format if that's easier to uh, manipulate. Um, but take a look at our 2018-19 public library data tables. 30 plus data tables full of um, all the data that we collect from our public library systems. So lots of reasons to uh, dig into that uh, data, especially right now, sort of in, as public libraries are developing system budgets and thinking about next year so the data table information is, is extremely useful I want to remind you about our table of contents service um, we this is a what a wildly successful and loved uh, table of content service are, are, are this particular program. Just giving you a reminder about this, you select the titles of the journals that are of interest to you and we will email you the table of contents and, an, and once you have a chance to re review the table of contents, you tell us which articles you're interested in and we will get those articles to you. So that is, um, that is awesome uh, to, to have that um, uh, to be able to offer that to you and we look forward to you participating in our table of content service. That's great. Also want to remind you about our professional resources that we provide. I, I do, for those of you who um, come back to the division updates, you've heard me talk about this plenty of times, but always um, want to make sure you know that you can get a, a state library card if you work for a public library, a public school, or a public academic library. And with that state library card, you get access to the library literature databases and our collection of professional eBooks. And thinking of eBooks, I've got a couple of, thank you, the title uh, a little of uh, 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 cover art here just to show it show a sampling of our professional ebooks um, 
and, and also know that we have a large collection of print titles that we can provide through interlibrary loan also, of course. So uh, ebooks are wonderful, but know that, that you know, it's part of the, just part of the story, right? With the interlibrary loan and the um, access to other things in our collection. As always, when we're together, I want to remind you of our continuing education opportunities. You have loads of those, and I suppose maybe at this point in our lives, we are uh, maybe uh, <laughs> tired of virtual events, although I'm, I'm again, always thankful that, we, that the virtual uh, opportunity exists to get together, but just a reminder of, of plenty of great continuing education opportunities at your fingertips with Florida Library webinars, of course, our division webinars, the MLC training events, which are a rock star, uh, the division does have records management training seminars that we do, um, of course, now virtually. So let us know if you um, are interested in information about that. Web Junction and so much more. There are lots and lots of uh, continuing education opportunities available um, out there. So I know you're you and your staff are tapping into all of that. A reminder of a couple of CE events that are coming up that the division is hosting um, sometime soon. The State Library e-resources for Florida Library staff will happen on March 22nd at 11 a.m. Eastern. And, and I'll tell you, all of these are listed on the Division's uh, Continuing Education page. So, um, sorry, this is off the cuff. Casey or Daryl, if you can put the um, link to that web page um, in the chat, I know that uh, people would find that helpful as I'm sort of reading out what these upcoming opportunities are. Um, another upcoming opportunity is Autism and Libraries, Resources and Tools that will be held on April the 1st at 1.30. And then our next DLIS discussion will be on April 19th at 3 p.m. Eastern. And again, there's more information on all of those events on our continuing education page, the division's continuing education page, as well as the information about um, connection links or registration links, all that sort of the, the applicable information that you need to, to know to be able to, to uh, participate in those if they sound of interest. Also, always want to remind you about how to stay connected with us, all the uh, various social media platforms. And of course, we also have our fabulous newsletters. Um, so I hope that you're taking advantage of our newsletters as well as our social media um, so that you can stay in the know with uh, the division related to everything uh, going on. Uh, our next update will be on June the 10th. So believe it or not, uh, that will that'll be the next time we get together in this particular platform. Um, before I open the floor to questions or any other questions that folks might have, I did want to do a, a quick preview about a couple of other upcoming um, activities or, or opportunities. Um, we've talked about a few already, but I have a couple, a couple of others. Um, we, we have um, released an invitation to negotiate for the statewide digital platform. And we're so excited. To, this afternoon is when we will be actually opening the responses from this ITN. Um, and so uh, stay tuned with us. If you've heard us in the past talk about the statewide digital platform, um, then um, you, you, you may know a little bit about it already, but know that more information will be coming um, out as soon as we get um, uh, more information related to what that will look like. Um, obviously, the ITN is a process of negotiating and, and determining what's the best uh, services to uh, provide to the state. So um, then another thing upcoming is um, that we're working on, and many of you uh, heard about this or know about this from the public library directors meeting that we had in December. Um, there is a, um, a, a joint, and I was talking about this a little bit at the uh, as we were getting started also, but the um, Wyoming and Florida, the state library agencies of Wyoming and Florida, so that means the division here in Florida, is putting together a joint application to the Institute of Museum and Library Services for a Laura Bush 21st Century grant. And um, what we're looking, uh, what we're applying for is three years of funding and training and, and some seed dollars to start programs related to arts programming for senior adults in public libraries. So really um, excited about this, this um, grant application that is being submitted. 
um, and the opportunity for bringing this project um, to, to Florida. So uh, stay tuned on that. Um, and as always on all of these things, um, at any point, uh, you don't have to wait for a division update. You can always just send me an email or, or call me um, and it can let you know where we are um, at any given point um, on any of these projects. So with that, I'm going to take a sip of water. I can see that there's at least one question here in the chat and um, I'll be ready to answer some questions. So let me just take a sip of water here. And Amy, while you're taking that sip of water, I'm going to read this question out loud just so we make sure it gets captured in the recording. Um, what changes have been made at the State Library in response to the $9 million reduction in revenue over five years? Okay, that's a great question. And of course, that reduction in revenue, and that's, it's a hard thing for me to answer kind of directly. So that reduction in revenue, that overall reduction in revenue in what I'm imagining is the, the general revenue column or row, if you're thinking about it that way, Julie, um, that is some, the cuts largely are cuts to our grant program. So state aid to libraries has had a, a, a cut as well as um, the library cooperative cut. Um, it, it's actually not until this year with the 6% holdback cuts in our current year budget that it has been operational cuts to the division. Um, I'm not, I, please let me know if they're, um, so that there, there have not, up, up to now, there have not been significant changes in as far as operations, except for the, the very unfortunate change where we don't have um, as much money to administer in grants or in some cases like the library cooperative grant funding where we don't have any uh, funding to uh, uh, to award um, in that particular uh, grant program. And Regina asked, do you anticipate that IMLS will give Florida another waiver on our maintenance of effort if state budgets remain reduced? That's a great question. And let me first clarify that Florida has never, up to now, has never filed for the waiver of the maintenance of effort. Many states have filed for waiver, but Florida never has. The first time that we will be eligible to file for a waiver is in our current budget year. And that's probably where there's some confusion, Regina, and rightly so, because I've been talking about this since July 1st, uh, but we actually have not filed for a waiver yet. Um, so here's the, the process in a nutshell. Um, we spend, you know, we've got our current budget year right now and the, the budget year will end on June 30. We have until the end of December to report our um, federal spending, which includes all of our general revenue spending, which is the maintenance of effort and partly some match, that has to be reported to the federal government in December. I anticipate that in December 2021, based on the 2020 2021 state fiscal year expenditures that we will be below the maintenance of effort amount that is required. So at that point, after that submission happens, that is when as an agency, we would be, uh, we would be eligible to apply for the waiver. So just, I mean, just to be real, I've been talking about it, but we haven't had an opportunity yet to file for it because we've never fallen below. Um, many, many other states have filed for a waiver um, over the past many years, but Florida never has. This will be our the first time. So uh, we would have until June 2022 to put together the waiver documentation. Um, and um, then IMLS would go through the process of reviewing that waiver documentation. And as I understand it, would make a um, determination prior to the award that is October 2022 to September 2024. So I would anticipate prior to October 1, 2022, knowing if our waiver 
is granted or denied. Um, so, you know, we're still a little bit on the the projection side, um, but that gives you a little bit of the timeline. And then just to carry that one step forward, if the waiver is denied, um, then it, that would affect our federal money that would be 2023, it would be spent in state year 2023-2024. Um, so it's still, again, you know, it would take a couple of years because of the way we spend money in Florida on the second year of the two-year appropriation from the federal government. So several, several steps to go. The one thing that I can say sort of as definitively as anything at this point is that uh, I know that we don't meet maintenance of effort, even if the 6% holdbacks are re completely restored and the 8B1 reduction to state aid is not taken, even if all of that is restored to where the governor ap approved our budget at the end of June, we will still not make, make, make maintenance of effort as it relates to the state spending to, for, to be eligible for 100% of the federal award. So, uh, quite complex. Great question, Regina. And I have been talking about this for a while, so I'm sure it feels like you know, that we have uh, um, applied for uh, maintenance of effort waivers in the past. But this will be our first. This will be our first rodeo um, in that um, in that venue. But a great question. Thanks for asking that, Regina. And Julie, I'm glad that other information um, helped. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, Regina. With the with the by the time we get the the federal money and they give us two years and then it's got to sync up with the state year. There's it's always a um a little bit off step. Yeah, take it takes a while, right? Any other questions? Well, while you're thinking about other questions, yep, thank you. There's my contact information in case you don't have it on speed dial already or, or, some, or something. Um, Yes, the recording will be available um, for this um, particular webinar. Absolutely, we'll get that sent out to you. Um, I'll stay on because this is what I plan to do until two o'clock. So um, I can certainly stay on if um, there are other questions. Um, and Cindy's got a question, how will ARPA info be distributed? Um, as soon as we get the ARPA information and just to make sure everybody knows, ARPA means American Rescue Plan Act. So that's that $6.7 million, we will be um, able to send that out through our newsletters, on our web page, um, through direct messaging. I mean, we will get out that information um, as quickly and as broadly as we can. So, you know, stay tuned with us. But if you're already seeing our newsletters, if you're already seeing, especially the Building Success newsletter, um, we will be, we'll use our listservs. We'll use every avenue we have, Cindy, to make sure that you know that the ARPA, uh, what we, you know, once we're to that point, um, how it will be, um, you know, what, what that process will look like. So stay tuned and, and please feel free as always to reach out to me or any other division staff member because we will always tell you what we know at that moment. Um, and Sheila asks, any chance for a face-to-face -face public library directors meeting this year? Um, I'll tell you, Sheila, I, I, it's, it's hard to know. Um, definitely we're talking about the fall. Um, at, at this point, um, I today really can't, make a call. So I, I guess maybe this is the chance is yes, there is a chance. Um, I am not, I don't, I don't know how high a chance, but there is a chance. And so uh, stay tuned on that as well. We'll definitely be doing a public library directors meeting. Uh, absolutely. Certainly we'll be doing a public library directors meeting. Um, we'll just the, the sort of the, the physical or virtual or some sort of hybrid uh, yet to be announced. So stay tuned for that as well. 
Great, good information, Linda, there about the statistics. And um, I'm glad that is helpful. That is wonderful. And just remember that um, while the statistics that I highlighted uh, today that we've just released, um, if you know those data tables exist on our webpage, if you need that uh, information in Excel, we certainly can provide it that way. Um, but just with, a, a, with an email to us, we'd be more than happy to share those statistics so that perhaps it's easier to um you know to manipulate on your end or you know if, if you need our help and helping to sort of uh, get a subset of data we certainly can can help do that um julie great i'm so glad that the cares act um the the that that worked uh, for marion county i'm so glad that that you all um had an opportunity to particip participate i will say one of the things we found with the cares act applications again as a quick reminder we had 1.9 million dollars um, I don't have it right in front of me, but we had, I think it was something like three times that much uh, um, in requests. I, I think we had, you know, uh, certainly over $5 million in requests, maybe closer to $6 million in requests and only $1.9 million uh, to award. And of course, thank you to our State Library Council for uh, doing the yeoman's job of re reviewing all the applications and making those really hard decisions as it related to which um, which applications got funded um, and, and and how that happened. Uh, the division is uh, incredibly appreciative of the hard work of the State Library Council um, and in, in their support of uh, the federal grant program. So uh, uh, thank you for for the comment, Julie, and thank you to the State Library Council for their work and, and helping us carry out the CARES Act uh, funding here in Florida for Florida libraries. So we've got about eight minutes left. Again, I'm going to stay right here. I, I do have another meeting at the top of the hour, but I, I am, am scheduled to be right here with you uh, and, until the top of the hour. So if there are any other questions or comments, happy to uh, uh, hear them or see them. And certainly, um, and, and Casey will confirm this, I'm pretty sure you can um, raise your hand and unmute yourself if you would. Um, if you'd like to uh, speak to the group, that's that's wonderful also. As I said, I don't have any other, this is Amy, I don't have any other content to, um, to share today or, or any more slides. We're kind of at the end of the slides, but i um, certainly happy to stay on and, and again, answer any questions or, or get any feedback from you all related to um, anything that's going on, uh, whether it relates to the division or just sort of what's happening in your neck of the woods. So glad people were here, it's wonderful. This is Amy, I'm gonna take a sip of water. Thank you, David, for that information. If a five, five million in requests for the CARES Act, so I was remembering a little high. Five million in requests, but um, only 1.9 million to award. And Regina did post a question. When do you think the council will meet for LSTA grants? Oh, I do know that, um, Regina. So give me one second. I just got to turn around to my computer. Um, got a lot of dates rolling around in my head. So you don't want me to just guess because that's, um, or not that, and I don't mean guess, but you know, um, give me one second. Actually, there's a faster way to look this up. You know how it is when you're a librarian. There are plenty of different ways to look it up. May 26th and 27th um, are the dates for the State Library Council meeting. Those are scheduled to start at nine and run until about, you know, until well, until we're done each day. The 26th would probably run until 5 p.m. The 27th will run until we're we're finished. So State Library Council meeting uh, to be able to discuss the applications that are due on April the 5th are is on may 26th and 27th so there's that regina great 
Glad to have you all here. Yes, the um, yes, the State Library Council meeting will be virtual. Yes, that's yes, that is exactly right. So um, there's yeah, thank you, David, for answering that too. Yes, it'll be uh, through our go to meeting platform um, or or go to something, whether it's meeting webinar, I get all confused training. Uh, we'll put we'll put together information so you'll get to the right place. I promise. Uh, go to webinar. Thank you, Casey. Yeah, I, I go somewhere. I go to hopefully where I'm supposed to be, right? <laughs> That's always the hope. <laughs> Glad you all were here today. Thank you very much. Again, I'll stay on. Um, got a, four more minutes until my two o'clock. So Casey, I think we can um, stop the recording at this point, if you would please.